Well, hello, everyone. We are back. We are back to game. Uh, this is a very exciting day. Uh, I'm uh, I'm so ecstatic right now uh, for uh, finally getting to run uh, some Simbarum. Um, I uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm I'm freaking out here. Uh, let's get around to uh, to cast and crew and uh, see how everyone is doing this evening and go ahead and introduce your character. Uh, and then we'll get to uh, sponsors and we'll get into it. Uh, first and foremost, Kiana, how are you doing? I am good. I'm super glad to be back here. It's been a hot minute, um, but yeah, it's, it's super great with all these lovely people. Um, yeah. Uh, you said character things. Uh, I'm playing uh, Anora, who is a human sorcerer, who is probably the most terrible character I've ever made. So we'll see how that goes. Well, I mean, you do everything so well. I'm sure it'll be, you'll bring a whole new level to evil. I don't know. But playing evil, we have to have an evil sorceress somewhere, and I can't come up with all of it. So uh, next up. Uh, <laughs> uh, our, our, our new uh, member of the party, uh, Mr. Billy. Bill, Billy, what do you prefer, Bill? Uh, whatever you feel the most comfortable with. You can call me Bill. You can call me Billy. I've been called both. Sir William, uh, a lot of my coaches uh, from the past have chosen to call me that. I'm down with. Uh, but I'm playing Unchala. He is uh, uh, touched by spirits. He is a human um, who has uh, been into the dark wood and seen some crazy, crazy things uh, and has developed the ability to communicate with those that are no longer living. So uh, this is uh, a very fragile character, and this is the first time in a long time I've played not a beefcake. N not a beefcake. All right. So, how, what do you give his chances mm. of survival? One in sixty-two. All right. Well, that's what the bones decided today. Uh, next up, uh, our other uh, cosplayed out. Which, by the way, bravo, gentlemen, bravo, Greg. It has been far too long, my friend. I. I'm so happy to be back on WebDM. I am ready to play. I am playing the Changeling Kiln. Um, he is a glass cannon that needs to climb trees and shoot arrows. But boy, oh boy, if you let him loose a shaft, you are going to be uh, happy if you're his friend. Sorry if you are his enemy. But I can't wait to play with this group. I've been waiting to play Simbaroom for a very long time. It is a deadly, deadly system. Don't fall in love with our characters. Uh, Billy's odds are accurate. Back to you, Pruitt. Yes, yes, most definitely. Um, yes, thank you, Emma. Uh, and, and over to you, Emma. Uh, the, the one task with keeping these three fragile, fragile beings alive. Yes, um, that is a responsibility I have in the game, not in real life, just so that's clear to everybody. I think you guys are, are good and fine in real life, but yeah, we might all be screwed in the game. I don't know. I am playing Sweetums. Um, Sweetums is sweet and good and kind, um, and there's no, no agenda other than that. Nobody's going to believe me in chat, but it's true. There's no other agenda. He's sweet and kind. Um, and also very tough. And hopefully, he can save some lives. Um, oh. Hopefully. 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 It's good to be back. It, it is most definitely good to be back. Uh, and yes, the uh, character art there uh, in the middle and uh, seen elsewhere on the internet. Uh, thank you to Nicholas. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember his, oh, there it is, NY Venter, at NY Venter. Check him out, do amazing work. Uh, you can see right there. But I did go for the black and white because it was the cheaper option because I figured at least one of you is probably going to die in the first adventure or two. So, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> I don't I don't want to, Greg. Um, <clears throat> it's, the, it's not me. I'm just playing the system. So that's the DM version of that. Um, <laughs> Um, 
So uh, right quick, I have to give a shout out to Tabletop Loot. They are our amazing, amazing sponsor there uh, up in the top right corner or top left corner, I guess, of your screen. Um, as always, we have WebDM15 as a code to get you 15% off dice mug shirts, whatever they have there. But until midnight tonight, if you use the code WEB30, capital W, lowercase eb, 30, 30, you will get 30% off your order uh, in honor of the premiere here. So just great big shout out to those folks over there. And hey, go give them some business. That's 30% off uh, up until that's midnight central, I believe, central standard time. So shall we begin with eyes in the dark? The land of Simbarum. It is a dark place. It is a foreboding place. It is a place of ancient forests and even more ancient mysteries and secrets. It is a land that is dominated by the Davokar forest. It, inside of it is the remnants and ruins of, a, of the actual people, the Simbarum people, but they have been gone a thousand years past. And since then, the forest has reclaimed the land. There are two parts to the Davokar. There is the bright devil car where the barbarian tribes live, supposed ancestors of those ancient Simbarum people. They live, they, they work, they ply their trades uh, in tribes and clans, some warlike, some less so. But in the dark Davokar, no, excuse me, Davokar, no one treads except the elves. The elves protect the dark Davokar by any means necessary. They do not allow interlopers or intruders at all. Intruders like the Ambrians who have come from the south, clad in steel, given purpose by a new god, the sun god Prios, and they see the Davokar in all of its mysteries, in all of its magical secrets and they see their destiny manifest before them it is theirs by right for their god demanded it so they make forays into the forest sometimes the barbarians uh, of the forest allow it some don't either way the elves will protect what is theirs in the dark Davokar. we find ourselves um in the land of the Vajvod. They are a barbarian tribe that is more accepting of the Ambrians and their explorations and forays. Um, they work as guides. They work as advisors. They also enjoy um, the herding of their Ibex goats um, which they ride through the forest and take back to the mountains to be safe, high in the cliffs. And it is in this area that strife has occurred in the last six months. First, there was what was called the War of Two Sons. It was really just a battle, but in a land that hasn't seen a true war in quite a while, it, three battles was enough to constitute. A war. A foray led by a archdeacon of the Church of Prios headed to a land, to an area at the footsteps of the Ravens, which are along the eastern border of the Davokar forest, against the wishes of the Vajvod. They apparently were attacked by barbarians and retreated and held against a second attack. And then they chased the barbarians into the forest and found them regrouped and dealt a killing blow. Only five members of that team came back from the Davokar of what was 40 when they set out. In the time since then, there have been various disruptions, marriage ceremonies, uh, 
um, fertility rites, um, rituals to ensure the good harvest and a good planting season coming up in the spring. All of these have been disturbed by one force or another. The witnesses all tell different stories. Some blame the changelings, some blame the elves, others the goblins and ogres. But whatever is in the Davokar, it is increasing tensions to the point of almost boiling over. So we find ourselves in the forward outpost of the Ambrians known as Caro's Finn. And in Caro's Finn, expeditions set out from here. They come back, regroup. Uh, they also ply trade in, in drawing fire water out of the marshes. They're able to extract uh, a burning substance and they sell it to help beat back the darkness of Davokar. We find ourselves here because there's been a call for a peace summit. The barbarians wish no further incursions into their land if there is to be strife. And the Ambrians wish the same because they want to find as many ruins and magical secrets as possible. So what can ever keep the peace must be. The leader of the barbarians, Markarian, has arrived at Karos Fen to lead a march into the forest. And it is the night prior. Just outside the walls, the wooden palisade of Karos Fen, that we happen upon a changeling, Kiln, called here by your captain of the Iron Sworn. He steps out of the darkness at the appointed time, at the appointed place. Kiln. Captain. I know you haven't been part of the Brotherhood for long, but I just want you to know, I have faith that you will strengthen our ranks. As you stay. I, I have a quandary. One of our Brotherhood has gone missing, so he's some months past. He was supposedly mixed up in that business with the Church of Prios and the Barbarians. He was undercover. I have not found his body in the forest, and reports show that he returned back to Temple Wall, but he has not checked in. I'm not sure why, not sure what happened out there. I need you to find out for me. There is a contingent of the church here. They intend to make the march tomorrow. I have passage for you and your brother. I know you travel together. A favor with the magistrate. You will be with the party itself as guards. Just watch, observe. See if you can find out where young Mero went. I'm worried about him. As you say. Should we worry about your brother? There would be a... Uh, his spine would straighten a bit. 
his demeanor would change slightly. Of course not. Hmm. Well, some of the covens aren't happy with his predilections, so be careful out there. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best, my brother. And depressed. Why not? <laughs> Might be the last one you feel. Anyway. <clears throat> but what, what kind of mission are you sending me on? <laughs> it's over the hills. Anyway. <clears throat> and he holds out a um, a folded piece of parchment, which you uh, you recognize as a uh, a writ of exploration or a exploration license. It gives you free pass to be in Davokar for the extent of this mission. This will cover both you and your brother. Just be sure to keep him in line. Pruitt, the expiration date of the license to be inside the forest, how many days? Uh, it, it, it is... It is set not more than 30 days, but for the extent of the March of Peace. It is tied explicitly to this march, the, the barbarians and Ambrians, to their place of ritual, where they will sign a peace accord, uh, according to barbarian law. And, you know, at most, you probably think it would take a couple weeks to get there and back, but this extends up to 30 days. Then Kion would say, Captain, I have a request. Speak it. In the event I become separated looking for Morrow, it could be weeks into the border of the forest. Could we, I have heard tell that there are such license to be open-ended as one of the Iron Sworn. I would expect that you could grant such open-ended license. Well, I can for you, because you are iron sworn, but I cannot for your brother. This is more for him. As you say. <sighs> Keep a stout heart and a sharp eye. There are troubling tales in Davokar. Hopefully we can figure out what it is and get back to the business at hand. And he holds out a hand to clasp and bid Kiln you farewell. Yeah, Kiln would absolutely take it. He gives you a nod and a farewell and he melts back into the forest. A short ways away, uh, knowing that his brother would probably want to meet alone, we come upon Unjala. Uh, Unjala, what do you what what is what do you usually do whenever you're kind of your your brother's doing his thing while you're in the woods? It's you would witness him like focusing and looking at things in the air, but you wouldn't be able to tell what they were. So he's mm -hmm. just kind of what seems like painting with his hands and then he'll erase something and start weaving in and out of the air. It seems like he's drawing something. Maybe he is, maybe he's just enjoying the caress of the wind on his skin. Mm -hmm. Well, as you are painting the wind, so to speak, uh, you're there in pretty pretty peaceful quiet. Uh, this close to Caro's Fen, it's it's fairly safe, um, but it's 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 a it's a nice pleasant evening. It's just about spring. Winter has released its grasp, done it and done its work, and you are alone for a time until you hear a raspy voice, a familiar one at that, break the air. 
Are you seeing more colors, Unjala? Yes. Several of them. What is it to you? And uh, stepping into a bit of the light is uh, is a someone that you know that um, she is Mama Banny, the head of the Banny Coven. Her and her coven are the advisors to the barbarian's leader, Markarian. They act as his voice with nature. And the Banny, the Banny Coven don't really tolerate you that well, but they have come to you before with requests for assistance in secret. And it appears that she is gracing your presence once again as you look upon her ancient weathered face that looks like it was chiseled from stone, so old and, and, and just implacable. Monk, be quiet. <laughs> um, Monk will make an appearance here in a second. Um, but she kind of steps forward, gnarl, hand on her gnarled cane, and she kind of looks up at you from her barely four feet tall this tiny old elderly woman clad in, in these hemp robes with various bits of, of berries. And just, it looks like she just picks up random flowers and sticks them in somewhere in her robe. Um, almost like walking camouflage. But she looks up at you and is like, hmm? how many colors are you up to? Hmm? At least seven now. Hey. <laughs> There's a lot of people here. <laughs> yes, they can overwhelm. I Just... like what you've done to your robe, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. We went through a berry patch earlier, and so I have snacks for later. Would you like some berries? Are, are you sure? And she kind of plucks a, 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 a bit of them, a little bushel of berries. She hands them up to you. And they're sweet, a little tart, but uh, also sweet at the same time. Oh, the, the front of the tongue is, uh, mm, I'm not used to those. <laughs> yes, they do engage multiple of your taste buds. You will learn, you will learn. Unjala, I would like you to come with us tomorrow, if you could. I, of course, cannot speak with the open voice of the coven ever since that that thing with the tree you know you remember you're still talking about that is well, there nothing better going on ah uh, well you know old women you just sit around and like to gab but mm. there have been very disturbing things happening in our woods yes Things that even the animals won't tell us. And we need your help. We need your eyes. We need you to see. How have oh, you, you been see differently. Out? What? How have you been finding out about these things? Well, I mean, people have been attacked. But no one can give us a straight answer as to what it is. Hmm. I suppose that would rest on the fact that my brother would be able to come with us. Oh, I'm sure things will work out for the best. That, uh, I'm not too confident in the way that you said that. Well, it was meant to be cryptic. It'll make sense eventually. Hmm, okay. I, when do you depart? Well, the march takes place tomorrow. I will be with Markarian, of course. Um, again, I, I wish that we could be more open about this. Perhaps if you help us, the others in the coven will relinquish their, hmm, shall we say, bitterness. Uh, they can take their bitterness and 
put it somewhere where they don't like, I don't care. Well, I hope that you do one day. But people come to us. We know things, Unjala. And you come to me, hmm? Well, yes, my back isn't what it used to be. You can go where I cannot. But please, please do this for me. Would you? Can I have a couple of more berries? I can do you one better. For you see, I have a grandson who needs to get out of the house because he's far too big and he takes up too much space. He'll look after you. It is the best I can do to help you. Would you like to meet him? I would. Do I have to trade anything for him? No, no, not at all. I just wanted to help you on your travels. And like I said, we kind of need some space in the, in the lair. You know how it is. I do? Mm, I can tell, I can tell you do. But don't you worry, my little sweetums won't get in the way at all. Okay, is there a reward for seeing the things I'm supposed to see and babysitting your grandson? Well, um, like I said, perhaps um, you'll be permitted to learn from the coven should uh, things work out, should you find the cause of these transgressions, these disturbances to our rites and rituals. Perhaps I can help you with um, other knowledge of places, of peoples. I like that. Well, with that out of the way, oh, sweetums! And she kind of like wraps her cane on a on a tree, and yes. from about forty feet back. <clears throat> what do we hear? Mama? <laughs> no, Mama. come here. Don't be shy. Come it's, here. He's a friend. There's there's prickers in, in berry bushes. I'm trying to be careful. Oh, don't worry. You'll be fine. It'll exfoliate your skin. Come what? here. <laughs> it's an ancient rite. You don't know. Don't worry Ex about it. Exfoliate. This sounds yeah. painful. Painful. Mm -hmm. It's quite rejuvenating. Hello. Hello, little fella. And Emma, if you would describe your character. Sweetums is like if you took a toddler and made him, what, nine feet tall? You uh, Do you just novice for that? Yeah. You're about, you're about eight feet tall. About eight feet tall. Um, but with a face full of sunshine and like a chipped tooth and, um, he's wearing armor that's somehow a little too big for him and, um, he's smiling at you and he's very interested. Hi. Hello. You are. Put his hand on Sweetums. Uh, Ujala extends like a trembling hand. <laughs> You're very large. I, You're very small. Yes. Yes. I am. Comparatively. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, everybody large is. For an ant, though. Are you an ant? I'm confused. Mama? No, oh, no, no. He's he's a human. He's a human. Don't worry, sweet. You don't confuse him. Don't. So, then do I just not do analogies? How does this? Just speak plainly. I'm a mystic. I am a witch. Half of my work is in analogies. Mm. Yes. That is the problem. 
Now imagine Mama. seven mystics trying to talk to him. Mama, he's got allergies? Yes, he does. Oh, I'm sorry. He is allergic to swords and arrows. So you have to protect him from them or he will have an allergic reaction. An allergic? Oh, no. Well, and I remember when you ate ragweed? those berries. Remember when you ate those berries and your lips got all puffy and you couldn't eat? It's like that. Okay. That doesn't, that's not fun. No, it that's, is. You shouldn't get swords on your lips. Mm-hmm. And Mama Banny looks at you and Jala and gives you a big, nice wink. <laughs> I'll help you. Ujala will wink back with both eyes. <laughs> you okay, for it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I think I think we're gonna have. I think we're gonna have a good time. This will be good. I'm real good. I'll protect you. Good time is subjective. Subjective. But well, actually, all of time is subjective, but that's neither here nor there. It's a flat right, time circle. To go. Yes, yes, time to go, time to go. And she starts to totter, turn around. She turns to you, Sweetums. Now, Sweetums, yes. I want you to be the sweetest boy that you could possibly be. But there are mean people, okay? Mm -hmm. So protect Unjala and I... I assume he has friends. Them too, sure. His friends too? Mm -hmm. But not anybody who's mean to him. No. no okay. Don't don't protect them. Mama, uh, it's just I need one one thing. He gets in close. Can I have a hug before you go? Oh, of course. And she raises up on her tippy toes as you're kind of bent down and she she grabs you by the by the neck is I don't know if you pick her up or... I do. Of course I do. It's our thing. It's oh, what we do. Oh, 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 and you hear like a couple of bones popping. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh, thank you. That one... And she kind of limbers up her back a bit. Oh, that one will last for a couple of months. Thank you. Okay. Now, be nice to Sweetums. And she turns back to you and kind of thrusts her cane like in your chest. And don't make my boy do anything bad. What, what is bad to you? Well, you know. And cryptically, after saying that, she turns around and walks into the woods. Sweetums, I, uh, yes. this is going to be a, an adventure. I've had a few of those before. I'm excited. Yay. Yay. Do you know any adventuring songs? Sure. It's where you only walk forward with your legs and you make no other sounds whatsoever. It's my favorite song. It's a leg song. Right, but it's only for moving. It's a moving song, not a noise song. That's interesting. Yes. I'll have to try. Please try all the time. Oh, all the time? That's a challenge. Okay. Mm. Starting now. Good job. <laughs> You're doing it. And as we pull away from the scene of Unjala teaching Sweetums their first adventuring song, <laughs> which is Quiet Water, Still Water, one, two, three. We cut uh, inside of Karo's Fin to a nondescript tavern. It's about dinner time. And Anora, uh, describe your character and, uh, and what she's doing here uh, at this tavern. Anora is a human, uh, Ambrian, so she fits in with everyone else around here. Um, the only really eye-catching things about her is, um, her very bright red hair, um, which goes off in waves that she doesn't touch. Um, and it takes, a, it moves with her movement as she leans back in her chair, 
with all the confidence of somebody who not exactly owns the place, but knows that they could if they wanted to. Um, and she um, is uh, tapping along this uh, necklace around her neck, which has a variety of uh, gemstones and rocks and bones and feathers on it. Uh, but centered on it is this whitish uh, moonstone. And she just taps along it as her um, green gray eyes just kind of just survey the area, just taking it in. And um, it, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty raucous evening here. Um, this I mean, Karos Finn is a border town, like literally on the border in the forest. So it's usually got a, a rough set of character that comes through here. The adventuring type, the, the woodsmen, the, the hermits, those that have come to trade uh, whatever they harvest or forest out in the woods. But tonight is a little different with the influx of the barbarians. This, it's a bit more diverse than it usually is. Uh, there are goblins running to and fro, picking pockets every now and again, you can see. There's uh, some a barbarian uh, of the Vajvod. You can tell by their, their blue and green, or excuse me, their blue and brown um, uh, leathers. Uh, them and an Ambrian are engaged in like a, a, a feat of strength, uh, seeing uh, who can hold the other's uh, arm down the longest. and there appears to be, even given the, the recent tensions, there appears to be an air of, of festivity, right? Of, 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 of revelry. Everybody seems to be drinking. They're having, there's only been a couple of fights, but that's normal. It's a bar. There's going to be fights. Um, and all is quiet and no one really pays you any mind. People give you some odd glances just based on the fact of, what you look like and the fact that you're just alone and not with a great, a bigger party. Um, but it's just one second. Um, I need to take a quick moment before we continue key in a scene. So Kiln, you just walked up on Onjala and a giant ogre. <laughs> I wanted to do this after, but I have to take care of something because my cat just got a little bit sick. So. What? What's going on? Mama See? Belly. You are, you are singing, but the moving songs, which is just your legs and no of your mouth. Got it? Okay. Brother, this is Sweetums. Now you can it's, talk. It's, can. I can it's talk. Cool. I'm Sweetums. It's nice to meet you. Am I, am I doing the song right? Oh, yeah. The, this, the song part is over. This is, I'm introducing you to my brother. You can say hello, Kiln, which is my brother's name. Hello, Kiln, which is my brother's name. Perfect. Well done. And just I'm like sweet. that, Greg was the, the, Greg was the straight man for this campaign. <laughs> Um, Sweetums holds his hand out to you. Kiln would take it. Yes, he gently caresses your hand when you give it to him. He's, he knows he's supposed to do it, but he's not sure what to do once he yes. gets your hand. That's, that's good, yes. Um, thank you. You're welcome. And are, you, are you a friend? You're, you're, the, you're his brother. That means I'm your friend too. Um, Kiln would just be just eyes are really never visible with Kiln, but the hood would move in on Jawa's direction. What is going on? I'm trying to think of the shortest way to relay the information and I can't. So here's the whole thing. Mama Banny. You remember we've been on some. Yes. They want me to investigate. Things are being interrupted. 
And once I agreed to do so, apparently, babysitting sweetums was a part of the deal. You agreed to do them work and they bequeathed you sweetums. Sweetums was free, I suppose. I didn't trade anything. But all right. If we if we do some investigating and come back with some information, they will be able to work with me on a higher level, exchange of goods, knowledge, which would be helpful. Well, she, they... uh, Sweetums has also been tasked with protecting me and my friends because I am allergic to swords. Aren't we all? But um, I got this and he would produce the, the license and hand it to his brother. Well, it is tough. Good. It's good for a month. My God, just like that. You've already scared away Sweetums. <laughs> Sweetum, you hear the tromp of heavy ogre boots uh, and the rustling of limbs <laughs> as you found Sweetums' arch nemesis paper. <laughs> well, um, Sweetums will be accompanying us, but this, this, where did you get this? What, is there a reason? Do we have to do something for this? Um, one of the Iron Sworn have gone missing a um, morrow. We are to investigate to see if we can figure out where, how. It hmm. is uh, the duty the captain gave me, but the license gives us 30 days, brother. Tufted titmouse, 30 days. 30 days could get us very far in Davakar. Mm, it sure could. A lot of north. things we could see. We could go north. <laughs> we could go north. Mm. Well, does that mean we have to find your comrade right away? We can go on this, we have transportation arranged for a certain point, but provided this walk of peace that they are taking care of, um, as long as they continue, it will be allowed in the forest without any type of retribution. If we play it right, we could be out of their grasp. Excellent. Excellent. Mm. I'm supposed to go out tomorrow to investigate what Mama Bani would, so... We can play along for now. Okay, I like that idea. Don't tell Sweetums, it'll only complicate things. Sweetums is practicing his singing. Elsewhere. Not listening. And as Sweetums is practicing his singing elsewhere, we cut back into the tavern <laughs> as a group of cats got sick in the corner and a barmaid goes to clean it up. <clears throat> Anora, you are sitting here in this tavern full of plebeians, pedestrians in life and thoroughly bored with it all. Um, being one of your ilk, you have to be careful with those who you're around. People that find out what you can do. Some might want to use you or burn you at the stake. I mean, it all depends. But there is one <clears throat> that you know holds you in very low regard as you're kind of messing with your necklace. The necklace that you know you stole. And you know who you stole it from. And maybe that thought kind of enters your mind. And then I'll be damned if Rio Coulter doesn't walk through the door. And he immediately looks right at you. His wide jaw, the hint of a beard 
trying to work its way up to asking out a full beard, but it's not quite there yet. His brown hair and his dark dashing eyes. He has a look about him much like you, Anora. He looks like he owns this place. He's dressed very finely, practical, but fine. For you know he is a sorcerer as well, and one of some power. And he dances through the room, avoiding the drunkards, the maids, and he slowly wakes over, walks over and finds a seat across from you. And he's got just the biggest grin on his face. Anora! <laughs> it's crazy to run into each other like this, isn't it? It's insane. That's a coincidence. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's pure coincidence. Here's the thing. <clears throat> As he straightens his robes, throws a wink at a, at a maid going by. She doesn't even look at him. You, uh, you have something of mine. Something very important. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you keep it. For now. All right. Because there's a catch, right? I mean, there's obviously a catch, right? There's always a catch with you. Uh, you know, I mean, I try. Can't be dashing and debonair all the time. Sometimes you have to be mysterious. It's our way, you know. So, here's the thing. I've got some orders further up the line. There's, uh, there's something going on out there, you know, ugh, in the forest. <clears throat> And we want you to have a look-see. Do you Me. think you can do that? Of all people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're formidable, okay? A little, little raw, a little green. But it's obvious. I mean, you have some power, right? I mean, you made a way with... Uh, it's not one of my prize. It's, eh, it's like top five prize possessions, I guess. But... Like I said, we'll just consider it a, a down payment for you doing this job. No retribution. I am still a little raw that, um, that you stole from me, but hey, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Can I get a bit? And he, and another maid just like walks right by. <laughs> um, um, I think at that point, uh, I know I will uh, wave over. She's probably been here long enough that she had some drinks. Mm -hmm. And she just waved over somebody to, to get herself a drink and not him. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you wave over and, a, and a, one of the barmaids comes over and, you know, she slops down a, you know, a pint of, of mead that they have there. Um, and he just kind of like looks at it and looks at you, looks back at it. <sighs> Is there no limit? No line you won't cross? Okay, that's fine. That's cool. We're good. So, here's the thing. The church, they did something, okay? They pissed the barbarians off big time. They did something. I mean, they started a war, right? War of the Two Sons or some shit? I don't know. I don't care for pithy names for things. But we need you to find out what the hell happened with that. Because my sources tell me one of the guys who was on that expedition is here as part of the church's like, you know, progression, their, their procession. Like he's here. So we need you to find out just, you know, what happened? You know, I don't know. However you want to do it. If you want to magic him, you want to get him drunk, do whatever you want. We just need to know. We need to find out what happened. Okay. There's a surprising lack of witnesses and we find that a little bit fishy. You know what I mean? I mean, it obviously means something's up, but... Well, my sources tell me that they were looking for something awfully powerful out there. 
I mean, they were willing to 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 just put a thumb in the eye of the Vaud Vosges, just like, hey, you welcomed us into your home. You told us not to go over here, and then we're going to just go over here. Like, that's what they did, basically, right? So we just need to know, you know, what happened. What do you think? So why do you need to know this information? Well, I mean, we, we want to know what we want to know what they were up looking for. I mean, hmm. in game. I mean, yeah, we, you need to find that out, too. But I figured you're a smart woman. You just go with it anyway. What do you think? I just go with it. Oh, you know, I know how you are. Come on. <laughs> Come on. What do you think? Okay, I'll sweeten the deal. What if I said I could provide you with a license for exploration? A license? Unlimited. Free reign to march around the Davil car as much as you want. What if I said I could make that happen? Well, now you're more talking my language. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Anora, you, you notice, like, some people, like, kind of giving, looking over at your table, giving some funny looks, you know. I mean, these are all pretty salt-of-the-earth people. A couple of fancy-dressed mages walk in. I mean, you know, you're assuming. I don't know. Yeah. So what, what do you say, hmm? I'm going to need a little bit of proof about your word on these things first. Well, I mean, what do you want? Just like, oh, you want me to just give you the thing right now? I need something. Well, I mean, I, I just, I must have left it in my other robe. I don't know. I don't know. In uh, your other robe. You know, I mean, so absent mind. I, I had it. I misplaced it, though. Um, I don't know. It's weird. Hmm. And as he's sitting there, he's obviously like working up to something. Yeah. Uh, up by the bar, one of the barmaids like calls out, we got mail, mail for Anora. Is there an Anora here? We got mail. Oh, you're awfully popular. Haven't I always been? Well, I'm with a winning personality like that. I bet you are. And um, Nora will just swim back the rest of her drink. Um, and she will walk over to get her mail. Okay. You you go over and the bartender's like, oh, you, are you Nora? Yes. Is that it just a rough for you, ma'am? And he mm -hmm. hands it out. Yeah, she'll take it. Uh, yeah, um, it's a very simple envelope. Uh, it's pretty fine parchment. A flowing script just has your name, just the name, Honora, on the outside, and that is it. She like, right, over, right over your shoulder, like, Rio's like, I wonder what it is. Uh, she's going to step outside. She's not opening this inside, surrounded by people. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, you make a hole. I'll, I'll, I'm right behind you. I don't like touching him. And uh, and I will roll her eyes and, and walk outside and see that she's kind of in a less crowded area. She um, uses a single fingernail to open up the envelope. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you pop the envelope open just outside the tavern, you know, kind of in a slightly an alleyway, but there's still plenty of light to read by. Uh, and you you plop it open and the envelope opens and you see a, an official seal uh, uh, kind of fold out like a ribbon with a seal on it, fold out. And it looks like a very simple piece of paper folded in half with uh, some kind of official wax seal and a ribbon. Hmm. Interesting. 
You seen somebody else? Hmm? Should I be jealous? <laughs> the last time that you were jealous, it got you where we are now. Mm. And he kind of looks around at the ho-hum surroundings. Yeah. All right. So what, 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 what is that? It looks pretty official. She just, she doesn't even like answer him. She just pops. She just undoes the, the seal and ribbons and you starts to roll it. Yep. You tear the seal and unroll the ribbon and open it up. And in your hand is a license for exploration with no or, uh, exploration with no expiration date. Oh, that's where I put it. That's right. I forgot. I put it in the mail. So anyway, you now have proof that I'm serious. And I just wanted to prove a point because I knew you would take this because I know you. I know you. So we'll be in touch. And I hope you just, I hope you find all of the things that you're looking for. Because I know you. All right. You be good, kid. We'll check you later. And then as you blink, he's just gone. And I just lets out another disgruntled sigh and an eye roll. Kid. And she will tuck away the license. And head out. And head out. Um, <clears throat> the evening passes with much revelry. At dawn, the horns begin. The moment the first rays of light break through the trees of Davokar. The barbarian procession uh, sets out from Karo's Finn. The Ambrians following the church of Prios uh, trailing behind, letting the Queen's Rangers and the Queen's Guard uh, offer some buffer between uh, the two parties that started this whole thing. As you begin traveling along, Kiln, Onjala, being part of a larger uh, procession, you were told just to watch out on the periphery and call out if you see anything, but given pretty free reign. Uh, describe to me um, how you, um, what's, your, what's your modus operandi, Kiln, as the first few days pass of this procession. Just, I don't want to say absently looking for any signs or hints, uh, anything that could lead to the the missing Iron Sworn Morrow, but um, it is, he, he's distracted. Uh, Killen is somebody that whenever there isn't movement or action or conversation is constantly staring due north. Mm. Um, can be brought back it's not it's not so much that it's a, a reverie or it's a a distraction or a daydream it's just a position that he takes mm -hmm. and with this it's anytime he kind of enters deeper into even if this we're still in the, the the light part of the forest but um this place is deadly and with every step as the light becomes darker and the forest becomes more terminal kiln feels more at home right and uh unjala do you uh range with your brother or do you stay closer to the main body the main host unjala will range with his brother for certain he's always interested to see where the shadows lie what colors the shadows are the ebb and the flow of the energy in the wilds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, as you set out, you can tell by the shadows around that there is tension in the air. 
the revelry of last night is gone. The numbing opiates long processed through the bodies. And now everyone remembers why they're here and what caused all this, all these problems. And so things get back to uh, business at hand and you can tell that um, there's not a lot of talking by those except for within their own groups. Uh, that being the, the barbarians, the main Ambrian host, and then the small procession uh, at the rear of the church officials. Um, as you're, as you're moving along, Sweetums, uh, what, uh, what is Sweetums doing? Sweetums, if Unjala will let him, Sweetums will try to huddle up close to Unjala as much as possible. And the darker the forest gets, the closer he will be to to you. But whenever you look at him, he's trying to look like this is fine and I'm not scared. Mm-hmm. He's trying to to practice his singing, but also just be close. Um, yes. Sidle. At first, at first, he's kind of like startled because he's not, he has personal space. But then he kind of reads what's going on and then the necessity to attempt even in the, in the most feeble manner to comfort Sweetums. It's, it, it's okay. This is just just the forest. Well, yeah, it's just it's just the forest. It's, it's just the forest. That's all it is. See, it's so easy. Are you, you doing all right? You don't nothing. Nothing's. You're not allergic to anything here, right? You're okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It doesn't feel like I'm allergic to anything here. I, I want to let you know. Okay, you said there's rag ragweed, and. That's, that's, it comes out in the fall. Oh, oh. We have at least a. I don't. Fan. I don't think I've seen that part yet. I'm excited to, except except for the ragweed. That sounds bad. I mean, stay away from bees as well. Bee? What's a bee? That that is a story for another time. Let's keep are, going. Are they big like me? No. The opposite. They're small like me. They're smaller than me, and sometimes they hang out in groups. There are smaller things than you. Oh my. Okay. Yes. I mean, I know there are. I've I've seen some. Mom, Mama's smaller than you. I wonder what she's doing now. Having she's probably a great all right. Time. If uh, Sweetums, Anjala, and Kiln, if y'all could give me a roll, uh, a vigilant roll. Not modified. As you are kind of, I mean, the, you're traveling with a pretty large host. It's not like many people are being that quiet, but. A six success. For what? Seven. Failed. Failed. Uh, Anjala, do you succeed as well? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, well, as you're as you're walking along, y'all both of you here, um, you're only about a half day out. Uh, it's a pretty clear day. Um, oh, wait a minute! I forgot to roll for my second half of the day on my weather table. Hold on. Yeah, it's a pretty clear right now, but there are clouds forming uh, in the west, so it could mean rainfall later. Kiln, you 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 can tell bad. You can kind of smell it on the air. Um, the uh, the coming showers, but you hear what sounds like a very shrill and scared um, screech. It it sounds like it was a word that was kind of choked off, um, but you just kind of hear this. <laughs> but it's it's in the distance, um, away from the host itself. Uh, Kion would be up a little bit ahead of Sweetums and Unjala in a tree kind of just scurries up it. Um, 
sitting on a branch, but would kind of spin around almost like reversing oneself in the saddle of a horse and kind of cross his legs to keep from pivoting or pitching backwards, but look down at his brother in Sweetums. Did you hear that? It, what do you think it is? This is Davakar, it could be anything. It could be someone in need, a wounded animal, a trap. Well, we're tasked to investigate. Should we investigate? It is up to you. Would you like me to go ahead and you could stay here with, with Sweetums? Sweetums are, is already gone. You said somebody, sh it could be somebody who needs help. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. uh, hang on though, because you didn't hear the noise. <laughs> no. Oh, shit. So hang on. Sweetums isn't running the correct direction, but vaguely. <laughs> like if it's north, Sweetums is kind of running northeast. Uh, Hello? Sweetums. Um, okay, well, I, I, I'll use this. To mark the path, uh, Kiln has what are essentially bladders filled with flour that he pulls in his bow and shoots to high on the tree, kind of mark a trail that the iron sworn are able to follow without kind of revealing something to someone that doesn't know where to look for it. So to get Sweetum's attention, he'll fire one of those shots, those powder packets right at Sweetum's feet. Um, it's, it's not that way. Would you like me to show you? Yes. So, sorry. No, no. You need to be quiet, though, because the forest is dark and filled oh. with terrors. I just, the movement song. I'll do it. I can do that. I can do it. Yes, the quiet movement song. Follow me. Okay. And Kiln's going to go ahead, but uh, attempt to stealth a bit. But what he'll do is the packets that he has, he has smaller ones that he'll light the trees up as he goes. Right about eye level for an eight foot tall ogre. Gotcha. Okay. Since you're going to try to sneak ahead, go ahead and give, go ahead and, uh, give me a discreet roll um, at a plus two. Okay, and I am Shadow Spawn, so I will do this. A plus throb. Not 30. That'd be nice, but <laughs> success. All right, yeah, you, you move on ahead. Um, and as you move closer, you can definitely tell this sounds like some kind of trapped animal, but the, you hear, like, words. They're just really fast. They're like mixed in there with all the the the, the grunts and 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 protesting. As as you get closer and closer, uh, and and up ahead, you can definitely see like uh, some brush uh, shuffling next to a tree, but you can't quite see what it is from right where you are right now. Keeping Sweetums and his brother in sight, he would kind of put a hand up that his brother would realize that he's seen the source of the sound. Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to actually wait for Sweetums to get up here. Okay. So y'all are waiting for Sweetums to join you. Back at the... Uh the procession itself. Anora, what, uh, being a bit of a loner, what, uh, what, how have you been uh, using the first part of your first day uh, setting out from Karo's Finn? Um, I think she's been alternating between eavesdropping on conversations um, mm -hmm. and flipping through uh, a book of hers. Okay. Uh, what, what part of the where are you are you eavesdropping on the barbarians conversation the main queen's guard or back near the church um, back near the church yeah okay 
All right. Well, uh, I guess go ahead and give me a uh, give me a discreet. Uh, okay. Give me a discreet at a minus one though. Okay. Discreet at a minus one. That is a success with a five. Okay. Yeah, you managed to just kind of hang back. Um, and like I said, it's it's a small procession. Like not there's not even like ten members of the church uh, here. Uh, they are being led by. Um, the, he wears the trappings of a of a Templar, which are kind of the the militant arm of the Church of Preos. But he's not uh, in like the full regalia that you normally see. Uh, you hear someone call him Guard Minister at one point, um, but he seems to be the leader. Uh, uh, for the most part, there's not a lot of talking back here. He he pretty much shushes most people who who speak too loudly. Uh, constantly reminding them why they're here, um, and uh, Prios is watching, uh, things like that. More, more like kind of, you know, catchphrases from the church. You know, as as far as Prios lighting lighting the way and things like that. But um, at 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 some point, you you do hear uh, one of the Ambrian uh, the the Queen's Rangers. He kind of falls back uh, in line. And um, he comes up with uh, solemnity and respect to this guard man. He's like, um, <clears throat> Guard Minister Marrow, um, I just want to know um, if you would like to march uh, with the main host, it might be safer straggling uh, at the tail end of a train such as ours. Is, it can be dangerous. And... And Guard Minister Marrow basically reminds him that I, this isn't the first time that I've braved Davokar. It didn't kill me then. It won't now. But thank you. Thank you for your concern. And he, you can tell he, there's some spite there. Um, and he, he has a very rough voice, like he swallowed a hot coal or something. Uh, it's very... Like there's cinders in the back of his throat. But other than that, like you don't really hear much. Like he, he pretty much shushes most of the, the other priests and that are with him that speak up. And um, if after a while she's not getting any information, much information from hearing, she is, uh, she's looking up from her book and she's flipping through pages, but not mm -hmm. looking down at them as she's just watching. Mm -hmm. um, guard minister especially but just kind of what is the she's not looking for anything specific other than the general power dynamic you know mm -hmm. who looks over to who when something seems suspicious who um, who uh, tries to keep away from certain other people who's who's trying to avoid the guard minister's admonishments mm -hmm. stuff like that she's kind of just wanting to pick up on those little bits and pieces of behavior. Yeah, uh, definitely the guard minister. Uh, he, he is in charge as far as the church uh, of Prios here. Um, those behind him, they literally stay behind him at least two steps. Uh, if they get shushed a, a, too many times, they kind of walk to the back of, the, of their train and, and try to talk in even quieter tones. Um, for the most part, um, Guard Minister Morrow, he he looks above it all. Like he's not even looking out into the woods, like on guard. He's just looking ahead. You see him almost looking over the Ambrians. He is staring at the dead front of the of the train itself. Like he is focused on what is is what is before him, and he believes you can just you've seen that haughty look before. He believes that he's above all of this. And that nothing can touch him, um, and you can just tell that at a glance. Are there any of these priests which look a little more chatty than the others, or a little? Yeah, I mean, more... there's yeah, there's one priest who has been shut. I mean, this morning, you if you'd been keeping count, he'd have been shushed at least eight times. <laughs> And he's like at the very back and he's just kind of like, 
and he like yeah he's very chatty and most of the other priests have like rotated away from him because they don't want to get in trouble by proxy by being near him right uh but yeah yeah you definitely see uh you see one of these priests that just is trying to talk everyone's ear off Nora will just takes not faster steps but slightly longer steps Mm -hmm. to kind of get in line with this chatty priest Okay, um, i tell you what, go ahead and give me, uh, you're trying to do this discreetly? It's, yes? it's not, I don't want to be like, hi, I want to <laughs> right. get up Okay, here. so yeah, go ahead and give me, go ahead and give me uh, an, uh, another discreet roll. Okay. Uh, at this time, it's at minus two. Okay. As you're continuing to kind of linger around this group and trying to saddle up next to one of the priests. Success! Four. Okay. So yeah, you uh you you move right up next to one of the to this priest and he's like sitting there, he doesn't have anybody to talk to now, so he just kind of sees you and he's like, Oh, um do you know about our Lord Prios? I've heard a thing or two. Well, I can tell you a thing or two more. And we're we're gonna cut back in the woods. <laughs> uh so y'all are you decided to hold um, whatever is struggling in the bushes, Kiln uh, and Unjala. You can hear it definitely. It, it, it sounds like a trapped animal of, of some kind, um, and you hear Sweetums doing doing the the quiet song. Sweetums uh, is is very quietly whispering. I think it's a bee. I think it's a bee. How um, do you know? I. I know about bees. Just, you just heard about them just now for the first time. And now I know. <laughs> it, oh, yep, it is. It's a bee. Is it? It is. It is a bee. That's what a bee is. Whatever's in there. <gasps> then you should be careful. I, we, yes. We. I get in front of Unjala. Um, Kiln will kind of move as close, even if he has to climb up a tree a bit to kind of eye to eye with Sweetums. Sweetums, if you would move forward and look in the bush, but do not put your head into the bush, okay. just or your hands. You move the bush and look inside. I Prepare to protect yourself. I will be up here, and he's going to climb up a tree, pull out his bone bow, and walk as far out on the limb as he can over the bush, and pull one of his like yard-long arrows out and aim it down at the the tree, or down at the bush, I'm sorry. But he wants to get elevation and then kind of be able to see whenever Sweetums kind of opens the bush. Okay. Sweetums approaches, and you can tell he's sort of like... He's like he's psyching himself up a little bit. Okay, like I can do. I'm big, I'm strong. I can do this. Wow, and you can do it. I believe in you. He, then he sort of lifts the bush up and he goes. Ah. He okay. Does that. Um, and Sweetums, your strength is like 15, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You. So you're like, it's it's like the it's like the picking up an empty suitcase version of opening a bush. Right, so you're like go up and you just like and like throw it open, and what you throw the bush open onto is a small diminutive creature, um, bipedal. It's got arms, long, lopy arms with only like three fingers at the end of each. Its head is kind of large and bulbous with a big brown nose, uh, and its clothes are all ruddy and and dirty and and i mean like it basically looks like looks like pieces of like a burlap sack that have been fashioned into like a shirt um but it's only about two feet tall and its foot is caught in a small snare you can barely see the wire but it is there like killing you'd know this this is, this is a you know hunters leave out traps for fairies and fae and elflings all the time they're you know they're worth a lot of money to those who know how to use their bits. 
Can I roll a beast lore to see if I can ascertain exactly what type of fey creature this is? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. This is not guaranteed for success by any stretch of the imagination. That's a, what, a cunning roll for you? It is. Mm -hmm. Any modifications or just straight? Uh, no, it's pretty straight up. I mean, it's in the, it pretty, you're pretty shallow into the dottle car. Success. Yeah, this is uh this is like a little brownie, like a form of a like a fairy. Not not the fairy in the sense uh, cuz it's in the first cycle of the elves, they're fairies first, then they're elflings. But this is this is like a brownie. Uh they, you know, they're just fae creatures that that muck about. They 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 kind of stay near human settlements. And so you can kind of see his little bits of like cast off pieces that he's made out of his clothes and you see like a maybe like a broken piece of silverware in a, in a rope belt that he's like, that's his weapon. Uh, but he's like trying to, you can see him. He's trying to get this wire off his ankle and it's cutting into it. You can see a little bit of his, his blood as it kind of spills out in a very, like an opalescent red uh, kind of shimmers as it drips out. And he like, <laughs> and he pulls out his little implement, which is like a dull butter knife, basically. Um, Calm down. Just, <laughs> you can eat me. No, 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 no don't no, eat me. Not. Don't eat me. Not gonna eat you. Oh not, my God. not even hungry. Kiln. My friend. As Kiln it still has his <laughs> bow drawn. My friend, we can free you from your predicament, but we just need a a little information from you. It, it burns, though. It burns. Please. Debo will tell you with anything you want. Anything. Just please get it off. It burns. It burns. We will, but I have a feeling that you're going to run as soon as you get free. So I will ask you just a question. I know. My presumptions are wounding to your pride. Oh, oh, if only this didn't hurt worse. Hmm. Let's see if I can put a salve on both. Have you seen, and he would then look back towards his brother, knowing his brother has his own particular mission of investigation, but um, he would ask about Morrow and if, have you seen anyone that matches the description of Morrow? Um, in this area. I know we are still close to the settlement, but I am sure that you know this place very well. Debo's lived here his whole life. At least five winters I have lived here. I am ancient in these woods. That's really are. ancient. Hmm. Mm, he's one of the sun people, huh? What does he mean by sun people? I, I well, when you said you described him, I was making a, a, an assumption based on that, since he was oh. undercover with the Church of Prios. Right. Yes, yes, one of the worshippers of the sun. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. a couple seasons back, they came through. I remember, only mm. like four of them. Beaten, haggard. This would have been more recent, right? This is, Morrow was just recently, wasn't he? Well, he was part of the expedition that went out like six months ago and started the war. Oh, okay, okay. It's just, he didn't <clears throat> check he back recently. in after all of that. That was about six months ago. Okay. And he didn't, he just didn't check in after that. And so uh, this, this little brownie uh, by the name of Debo, uh, he's, he's just like, mm, yes, yes. Mm, mm. It was winter and then fall. Yes, it was fall. Mm. Came through. There were only four. Cuts, bloody. Oh, awful despondent. Were it there was any sad. Of them? Did you hmm? ever see any of them by themselves that mm. didn't go back to town? Mm. No. They all went together back to the thing, back to the, back to the wall, the wooden wall you came from. They kick me out of there often, but I have my ways. Yes, wily ones at that, I am sure. 
I've kept my end of the bargain. Do not break your truce, your pact. And he points at his ankle. I certainly will not. Brother, do you have any questions for Debo, ancient sage to this area of the Davakar? Well, you made your deal. I suppose I can make one of my own. Hmm. Debo, is it? Uh, mm. Oh, another. <laughs> I can heal your wounds. My brother will set you free. And I will make you right again. What do uh, you want for such great service? I want to know. Who has been interrupting the barbarian rituals? Mm. Hard to say. Hard to say. Some blame changelings. Some blame elfling. Some blame the church. Who are the Hard people doing say. the blaming? Hmm? Who are the people doing the blaming? The victims? Those having their rights interrupted. I hear them when I go through their garbage. Yes, they're very distraught. Hmm. Barbarians attacked once over here, and he kind of points to the west. Some say they saw a man change his face before running into the woods over here, and he points to the east. It is very confusing. But I, I want to, oh, yes. But I have seen. I have seen where they went. Mm hmm. I have seen. Where the churches went, hmm. where they were not supposed to, to the east, at the foot of the ravens, they went. Look for the lake. Dawn will show you the cave. It will. I have seen it. That is where they were attacked. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What like I said, I have been here five whole winters. You venerable thing. Well, I mean, I'm tied up, so I'm very vulnerable right now, but that's fine. I trust you. Well, first, brother, free him, I suppose. Of course, it is part of the deal. Uh, Using Hunter's instinct, I'm going to shoot the wire from my perch mm -hmm. and or kill a brownie. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> okay. Give us a roll. Uh, it hits and does seven damage. Uh, hits the brownie or the... The wire. The wire. The wire. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. You, you, your arrow plunges into the, the soft uh, earth. Uh, Buries, you know, past the uh, the the arrowhead itself, uh, and the wire. You hear the twing of it breaking, and he immediately scrambles and and pulls it out. Uh, but yeah, Anjali, you see his uh, his ankle uh, is is a little bloody. But he's got a pretty deep cut. Debo, hmm. come to me, please. And he gets up and kind of limps over. He tucks his butter knife away seeing as how it won't be needed anymore. And he pulls himself up to his full two feet and two inches, puffs out his chest, but you can see him kind of walking gingerly on his hurt ankle. Oh. Can, can you lay down on the ground? I need to elevate your leg. Oh, uh, okay. He kind of lays down on the ground. Sure. Staring down at this little two foot long. <laughs> he kind of sticks his leg up in the air. Um, he, he looks at quickly at his brother and then at Sweetums. Turn your backs. I must do this in private. <gasps> Secrets. Okay. Well, uh, do you need me to turn my back too? I... I'll just shut your eyes. Oh. Um... Kion will swing down, like kind of catch his legs on the limb and swing down in front of Sweetums. And let's just walk over here. Do we have to be silent this time? It's always good to be quiet in the woods, but we can oh. whisper. 
Okay. Okay. As I'm walking off, Kion would say, what is your favorite color? <gasps> There's so many to choose from. What's yours? Keep and he would pull back his hood, revealing his entirely blue face. I like blue. Yeah. That's... Can I touch your face? Sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, you can heal me. I'm not looking. Or looking, I can see your eyeball. Oh, sorry, my bad. You asked for it. And then he'll hover his hands above the ankle um, and start, uh, his eyes will roll back into his head and you can see his mouth speaking these weird words and then Oh my god! Oh god! And I'll cast Inherit Wounds, which is a roll against my Resolute. Oh, I, I just dropped my d20 in the dark. <laughs> no, 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 we're in the bright Nova car. <laughs> but my room is dark. Wow. Oh, belly. And I succeed. All right, really? yeah. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, you you uh, he like is pretty terrified at your display uh, of magic uh, as he kind of shuts his eyes, but then he starts to feel the wound kind of knitting up, and he looks down at his ankle like, "Oh, you have healed me." Yeah. Oh. And then if. He may or may not notice. I'll try not to portray it, but then there's like a ring of red that develops around my ankle. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't notice it because he immediately starts like kissing your other foot. So he doesn't see the ankle that's bleeding, but he's like, oh, oh, oh thank you, sir. Oh my God, you have taken such pain. Oh, thank you, sir. Is, if there is anything else I can do for you, Debo is the one to do it. If you see anything else, Please come and find me. Mm -hmm. yeah, of, of course, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I see anything, I will come to find you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, great savior. Thank you. What, you do you just, do you have a place to go or do you just want to stay here with us? Uh, I know, um... Yeah, I should probably go. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with that, like, you just kind of hear a pitter-patter, and then just the the branches are just moving, and he's gone. As he just kind of... And he's on through... Uh, he kind of bolts between your legs, Sweetums. You don't see what it is, but something bolts between your legs and is off into the forest. Sweetums giggles. Well... Did we get what we needed? Did we get what we wanted? I have progressed my search, brother. Nothing on my end, but information that it was already given. But your mysterious cave that appears at dawn by the lake, is that something that you wish to investigate? It is. How much further would you like to travel with the rabble? As far as we can take them, they will buy us time. The longer they are in here, the longer we have. Let us see if their course runs parallel. We can always range out and looks up at Sweetums, sing our songs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Kiln, you would know um, the direct. Y'all are heading generally north, uh, kind of east northeast. So you are heading up towards where the lake is. Um, it is about halfway up the Vojvod uh, territory, um, right near the right near the the feet of the ravens. Uh, you you know of this lake. You've seen it from a distance. You've never really been over there because no one goes there. You know, it's one of those places. So, um, 
you do know you are supposed to be traveling for at least um, four to five days uh, to this, wh wherever these barbarians hold their, their rituals. Uh, but apparently this must be conducted there if it is to be, have any kind of chance of standing throughout time. Um, it is about that time though, you do get a call from the main host as they have noticed some of their their rangers have moved off and you just kind of hear what ho do you see anything he would sound a whistle back he wouldn't yell but the whistle back for all clear like a mm. just he brings a, a small metal uh whistle to his lips and just casts a, almost like a bird call back mm-hmm Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the Queens Rangers, they, they, uh, they know these woods and, uh, it's pretty standard, uh, calls. So you just kind of see him, uh, this guy throw a hand up <clears throat> and, um, head back to the main host where we will, uh, take the action back to Kiana. So you had this priest talking your ear off about the wonders and enlightenment of Prios. For a, couple, for a couple of minutes. Seems like a couple of minutes. It's maybe been an hour. You're not really sure. Time has lost all meaning. Um, but, you know, when you have a salesman at your door, yeah. that's the way it is. Yeah. And she, she's letting him talk and she seems, mm -hmm. she's pretending to like listen and be attentive to what he's saying, although that's all stuff she's heard before. Right, right. And she had the same feelings about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, you actually see the guard minister turn and it looks like he's about to start admonishing the priest for talking to you, but he takes a second to listen and realizes that the priest is actually like witnessing to you and trying to win you. So he, it seems like he's like, he begrudgingly allows it. Okay. Yeah. When she notes that the guard minister had turned his attention back away, um, and there's a a pause in the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Anora will very quietly go, well, that's the most uh, expansive explanation I've ever heard. Oh. Well, I mean, the, the, the longer and, and longer that the light of Prio shines, the less dark and ignorance there will be in the world. And that is, that is our calling to be all individual candles brought together into one great conflagration. You have such a way with words, really. Uh, it's, it's, the church does uh, like to make sure that her, their priests are educated. Uh, we must conduct ourselves in uh, many circles. How about yourself? Uh, you, you seem finely dressed, if a bit out of place here in, uh, here in, the, in the rough. Yes, uh, suppose I do stand a bit out. Um, thought I'd, um, admit I'm a traitor, you see. I uh, thought I'd give my hand in another area. So much competition now with all the new people around. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's always new uh, adventure to, a new adventure to seek in Davokar. Uh, Oh, this business, though. Mm, such nasty. Such nasty things, indeed. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I, I just hope for peace to be once again reestablished so that we can witness to these barbarians. We can save their souls. We can show them the light, the way, you know? Yes. I believe that perhaps you with your words and your, the true belief I can see in you, you'll mm. be able to accomplish such things. Oh, yeah. Well, I am, I am merely, merely a, uh, a simple priest. I mean, you know, I, I mean, kind of, I, I hope to one day, I'd like to follow in the guard minister's footsteps, perhaps be a Templar, but um, I'm going to need to pay for some training. They want you to at least uh, know how to wield a sword. <laughs> He does seem like quite a uh, a leader. Yeah, he can be gruff, but um, he means well. He uh, he just wants to look out for our interest, um, make sure we 
walk the straight and narrow, you know, keep to the path. Oh, quite interesting. Uh, I feel like I've heard his name before, but I can't quite place it. Hmm? Are there any other tales that you know of his deeds? You, you mean Guard Minister Mero? Yes. Mero Fortuna. Yeah, I've, I feel like I've heard the name. Well, he was, and with that, he kind of he looks <laughs> around at the empty forest. Since you are like at the now at the very back mm-hmm. of the uh, of the train, I mean, he was he was the sole survivor of of the expedition. Oh. The, the war last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was vicious. I, I. He doesn't talk about it because I'm sure it was horrible. I mean, over forty men and women went into Davokar, and only he made it out. Only he. Well, he must be quite a formidable, if not just a priest, but a warrior. Then. I mean, he was, he was merely, he was merely just a, a second spear when he went in. They elevated him. His, his bravery, his courage. It's, well recognized. Um, yeah, we're, um, we all volunteered for this just because he was uh, leading it. I mean, like I said, I hope to be like him one day. Quiet down back there. <laughs> um. And uh, I know I will kind of will straighten up as if she had just been scolded as well, though she showed no shame on her mm. face uh, or feels none. And we'll lean in towards uh, this priest. As, well, I think I can see such tendencies that will lead you on that right path. Um, sorry, I don't think I ever asked for your name. Oh, uh, um, I- I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Adnan. Adnan. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, and it's it's a pleasure to uh, to greet you. And uh, I didn't catch your name, actually. Oh, it's uh, Rio. No, Rio. It's quite a. It's quite a dashing name. My uh, parents thought I'd turn out a boy, but uh, the name was set and picked and all that by the time I arrived. Oh, yeah, I mean, if, if you already have it carved, I get it, you know. Yeah. But still, it um, makes you stand out. Yes. Memorable. I like it. Very memorable. Um, oh, um, she don't mind. And, and you, have, um, you have something on your head and she's going to reach out as if to try to pluck something from on top of his head. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Is he wearing a hood? <laughs> uh, I mean, he, he does have a hood, but it is down. So his okay. hair his hair is exposed. And cool. It's, it's, it needs to be cut. It's pretty unkempt. Uh, it's not overly long, a little past the ears. Cool, uh, so cool. go ahead and um, see. So are you going to try to grab a hair? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and give me, uh, give me a discreet. Um, okay. <laughs> at, at a minus three. No, oh, God. you're trying to you're trying to a get a hair without plucking a hair, without him noticing. So okay, success with a three. Jeez. <laughs> so yeah, you just kind of you know. Oh, uh, thank you. You know, Rio. I think if there were more people like you, this world would be a little bit better of a place. And uh, and I will incline her head uh, respectfully. I've taken up enough of your time. Uh, I'm sure the guard minister would prefer if I stop bothering his uh, followers. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it's not a bother to me, but I take your meaning. Yes. <clears throat> um, the rest of the day um, is spent pretty quiet. Uh, after a uh, midday break for meal, a downpour starts. I mean, and it is, it is a true to life spring downpour. Like it is a solid rain that lasts for the rest of the day. It slows, slows progression a bit. Um, 
as you are kind of tromping through the mud. Um, it does little to slow Sweetums down in his massive steps, but uh, others, the, the muddy path begins to start sucking at your feet and it starts to become uh, a, a trudge. Um, so they decide to break early uh, to make camp, just to try to find a place uh, suitable for this many people to not get washed out overnight. Um, so, uh, Kiln, uh, or anybody who wants to help, uh, range out to find, uh, an appropriate spot, uh, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and give me, uh, either a vigilant or, um, if you have any knowledge of the area, I would allow a cunning roll if you have local knowledge. I'll, uh, I'll do a vigilant one because I'm, I'm good at that. Okay. Like I said, anybody can, uh, this is more of just trying to find some high ground, uh, while it's still pretty, uh, you're pretty shallow in, in Davokar, so you can, you can see, you know, fairly well at a distance. Well, I failed my vigilant check. I rolled a one. I rolled a one, too. Did you really? Holy crap. So, y'all find at the same time, <laughs> from different vantages, <laughs> like simultaneously, point out the exact same spot. It's a small hillock right off the path, um, but it seems to be pretty rocky. Um, uh, you, you can see maybe Kiln, um, what you notice about it is there are no trees on it. Um, uh, Sweetums, you notice some very odd formations kind of sticking out on the, like from, like looking from back, like maybe there's some kind of formation on the other side of the hillock that you can't see. Uh, but it definitely looks like there's something a little extra about it. Uh, but yeah, you, y'all, y'all both point that out, um, to whatever degree to the, uh, the main host. Uh, Pruitt, can I also roll a, uh, a beast lore here just so we're not like making camp in where something is nesting or there's like heavy traffic for predators or anything like that? Yeah, just go ahead and give me that. Okay. It is a cunning. I'm sure this is where I fail. So failure by one. Failure by one. I mean, you do know that like with a hillock like this, I mean, there it could be uh, evidence of a cave. You don't, you know, with the rain, it's kind of hard to tell if there's any tracks. Um, also with this large of a host, you know, that have been kind of moving through and various uh, different rangers have been kind of crisscrossing and, and keeping watch. You don't really see anything that sticks out. Other than, you know, yeah, it's a hillock. Maybe there's a cave there. But that's more of just like general knowledge about that, about the terrain. Okay. Okie dokie. Yeah, he'll point all that out to anybody that's kind of scouting or, you know, prepping tents or fires mm -hmm. or things like that. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Queen's Ranger who kind of called out to y'all earlier um, looks like he's kind of on in charge of this half, like the right half of the, the host itself. And as you pointed out, he's... Oh, good eye. And he, you know, kind of gives you a salute, um, the queen salute. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, yeah, the, the main host itself begins to turn towards that hill, uh, to, to try to get as many people up on it as possible as the rain continues to pour down. And you can see part of the trails now getting washed out. Uh, one of the creeks that y'all just passed, you can hear it quickly rising. Um, as, as you know, the torrential downpours are pretty common, uh, in the spring. And so, uh, yeah, uh, everybody begins to, to move in, um, <clears throat> a couple of the, the, uh, the wagons, uh, get stuck in the mud and, uh, there's a call for, uh, for help, uh, getting those out. I'll help. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and, uh, you know, there, there's like four guys like trying to lift this wheel out of the muck. Um, this big kind of flat wooden wheel. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Okay, listen, I know it's wrong. Yeah. Time out. I know it's wrong and I know I shouldn't do this and I Go shouldn't it. say it so I ruin anybody else's interpretation of it, but I can't help but not see Andre the Giant now for Sweetums. Like, <laughs> Hello, lady. You know, picking on <laughs> I'm sorry. Go back. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, there there it is. Right. That's the angle you need for your webcam. <laughs> like, Excuse me. 
Oh, uh, goodbye. Yeah, and a couple of guys like <laughs> get out of the way. Yeah, here. So, so yeah, you go ahead and go ahead and give me a uh, a strong roll. Mm-hmm. I've done this before. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, I beat it by five. Okay, yeah. So a couple of guys get out of the way and like one or two on the edge, like come up to help you. And like, as they put their hands on the cart, it just kind of lifts away from their hands as you pick it up and Mm -hmm. move it over. Where where do you need this? As you're like holding the cart and the animal it's connected to, its back legs are like up off the ground. Sorry, buddy. Kind of lets out a, you know. Hey, buddy. It's okay. Hey, buddy. Uh, uh, and, and, And the guy who's like driving the cart, who's like trying to keep his trying to keep his balance as the card is kind of swaying. Just, can you just just take a few steps forward and kind of put me in the grass over there, please? Oh, okay, sure. He does it. Okay. Yeah, Puts it down kind of, really, really, really gently. Like, uh, yeah, like... Uh, it takes about 15 seconds to just slowly put it down. And the eagle has landed. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> And so the, the guy kind of gets off there and he kind of checks the wheel to make sure it's not broken or anything. And he looks up at you. <clears throat> uh, th- th- thank you. You're welcome. And as you smile at him, he kind of shrives away from that because it looks a little terrifying. But um, it, yeah. And he kind of turns around to go back and console his his uh, his beast of burden, his, uh, you know, Donkey. I will do it too. I will get out of my pocket. I will get some of the berries that I still have. Oh, and hey, buddy. He, he's a little scared at first, but then he sees you feeding berries to his 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 mule, his donkey, whatever it is, whatever whatever you prefer in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, he's he's like genuinely taken aback. Um, I, I think thank you. You're you're awfully gentle for one of the big folk. Mama taught me you have to keep your hand flat when you feed them. That's good advice. Yeah, they might bite you otherwise, even if they don't mean to. And uh, yeah, that they can, that they can. <clears throat> and you see him, this guy kind of like straighten up as as he, you sweet him, he looks past you and um, he kind of looks a little stunned. I mean, this is one of the Ambrians. And uh, you kind of look back and you see somebody that you have seen many times, Sweetums. Uh, mm-hmm. The leader of the Vajvod, uh Markarian. He's walking up behind you, uh, clad in his brown and blue furs and, and leathers. Uh, he's wearing his, his goat skull mask that many of the barbarians, they, in the Davokar, they like to wear masks to keep their faces hidden from all the spirits. Um, but these Vajvod, they, they wear uh, goat skull masks of the goats that they keep and tend. Uh, various, uh, or a version of, of, of Ibex. Um, mm-hmm. These long rigid horns that instead of curving back like the ones we have, uh, they just kind of extend straight up and they're known for their battle prowess. Uh, as these things can slice open a man like a sword. Um, but he just walks up and calmly pulls his helmet off. He's a man of about mid-50s, kind of a rugged beard. He's like, oh, Sweetums. It's been a while. Sweetums gets down on his knees so he can see him in his face. He says, hello. You, um, you aren't with... Uh, with Mama Danny. No, she told me to get some friends. So I'm with Unjala now. Points him out. <clears throat> Jala's taught me songs. It's that been is, wonderful. Um, that is good. It's um, but you must be careful. Yes. And see, so kind of like looks at the Ambrians that you just helped. Not everybody uh, is as uh, willing to help as you. Well, um, that's why you need helpers. Isn't that the point? Uh, It is true. It is why you need helpers. Yes. Well, 
As long as we have you to help, I think that that will be fine. Yes. I I found a place for us to stay. Are you staying with us? Uh, yes, on this hillock, yes. Yes. That was yes. you. That was, it was, well, it was me and my other friend, Kiln, over there. Kiln is my friend. We found it at the same time. Well, um, you have quite a sharp eye. I, I, it's not a blade. I don't understand, but. Well, I mean, you see well. Yes, I do. Thank you. Yes, you do. Yes. Well, I'm going to um, go back and help my people set up camp. Yeah, what are you doing here? Well, we have to make peace. Make peace. Yes. Uh, you see, and you see 